outro cast. Nana, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this today. Where am I getting you from? Where are you dialing in from? I am in London. Beautiful London. It's, it does look like it's raining in the background. It is not raining in the background <laughs> for once. We had a very rainy May, but June has thus far been absolutely splendid. Cool. Well, the new movie, Queen of Glory, is a love letter to New York. I am dialing in from New York. It was great to see some uptown sites right there. One thing I'm curious about, you are the writer, you're the director, you're the star. Did you know outright that you wanted to do all three of those tasks? Absolutely not. Um, I set out to write it and, um, and maybe, and be in it, maybe I was, so, and then I ended up doing all three for various reasons of like, you know, wanting somebody to do it and then they couldn't do it. And eventually it was like, we're either going to do this and I'm going to do these three jobs or we're not going to do it at all. And so we decided to forge ahead. Wow. I'm not a megal- in other words, this is me saying I'm not a megalomaniac. I did not set out to do all three of them by myself. <laughs> you never know. Some people love doing everything because they say, well, who's going to do it better than I am? And other people, it's out of necessity. In your case, hey, it was organic. Now, how much of what we see on the screen matches the original script? Did it evolve a lot over time? It evolved a lot over time. Um So uh, my family owns a Christian bookstore in the Bronx. So that is true. Everything else is fictionalized, but um, we just tried to, uh, because we had that great location, you know, we decided to shoot as they often say with filmmakers, first time filmmakers that you shoot with around what you can get for cheap or free. So so we decided to go that route. And um, and, uh, I think the original script was maybe a little bit more it was a little bit funnier. It was a little bit more, um, I don't know. There was a little bit more slapstick. There was a little bit more, you know, in that comedic way, I was leaning more on that. And then as we started to make it, we were like, no, there's actually some really poignant, beautiful moments here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like shy away from or not include just to kind of like keep it as a comedy. So we decided to just go in that direction and not be afraid of it. That's a really good point. It starts off very serious. And then some of the humor shows itself. Like, for example, I don't think I've ever seen a movie that had an argument about pate before without giving (laughs) that much away. That was a unique moment in there. So it's interesting to hear that the script evolved, but you knew outright that that was the location, that's where you're shooting, like that was the stationary part of the whole thing? Yeah, definitely, That definitely. And then there was also some certain cast that I absolutely wanted to work with. So that was also, and built in, um, you know, Miko Gattuso, who plays Pitt. Um, that was my next question. Okay, please, please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I guess you're pretty darn experienced in this stuff. So I was going to say, was that written for Miso? Or was that just you saw the casting and went, that's the guy? No, so, we, so Miko worked on a film called Gimme the Loot which was written and directed by Adam Leon, who plays Lyle in the film. So Adam and I are friends and I saw Give Me the Loot, you know, back in the day and was like, God, I really want to work with that guy. And so I had, I knew there was a place for him in this world. I just didn't know what it was. And then when it came time to like, actually, you know, think about it, Jamin Washington, who is my producer, who also produced uh, Give Me the Loot, he was like, I think this is Miko's part. And I was like, Miko as a Christian bookstore employee, that's insane, or it's perfect. And so like, that was kind of how we ended up going. That is awesome. I can't imagine anyone else playing the Pitt character other than him. Me neither, me neither. And did he have any hesitation once he found out that it was a role in a Christian bookstore or is he just going, yep, I'll, I'll act. Miko is so down to clown. He is like, oh, you know, I was like, this is the deal. He was like, great, when do, where do I show up? I'll be there, you know, like he's very easy. And then without giving too much away, uh, Ohio gets referenced a lot in the script. Was there originally more about Ohio in there? There, uh, w- there was a scene that w- of, um, there was, a, there was a thought, there was a draft of the script in which we actually started in Ohio. Uh, one of the things that I decided to uh, pull back from was 
uh, again, without giving too much away, was like the betrayal element of it. Um, I wanted to it to be more ambiguous. Like I didn't know, you know, and so we decided to pull away from Ohio and just keep referencing it rather than actually physically going there or or either like, you know, or concretizing any of those details. We just wanted it to be like, this was, we're seeing it through this character's perspective. This is what she believes. And when we get conflicting information, um, we don't, we don't know, you know what I mean? Like that was, but I, that that was intentional. We see you eating pizza a few times in the movie. Was it from a good local spot or is it just any old pizza? It was a good local spot, but man, I mean, you don't want to eat pizza that much. <laughs> I, that was a first time filmmaker mistake. I will never do that again. Okay. Yeah. I was curious about that. They say that when you're in a food commercial, that the food might have paste between the buns of the hamburger <laughs> and, you know, cut, okay, do it again. And then they give you another, do it again. That happened with you? That there was no paste in the, in the pizza. The pizza was real, but I was so, I don't think I ate pizza for, I, I've only just recently returned to pizza since, since that, since that shoot. It is, it's, oof, yeah, no, never again, and never again. How long ago did you wrap the shoot on the, on the film? Uh, we finished November of 2019. Oh, that's a long time without pizza. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And then uh, going through your IMDb page, you have no shortage of projects. It, it, it's between that and then what's on your website, which isn't on your IMDb page, unless the titles change and all that. You know, some of them she's writing, some of them she's acting in, some of them she's producing. It's hard to keep track of you. Do you know what's next after this one? I do. Um, uh, I did a, uh, a series called The Chair, which comes out on Netflix on August 27th. Mm -hmm. uh, that was show run by Amanda Peet. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and it stars uh, Sandra O oh and Bob Balaban and Holland Taylor and me. And so, uh, so that, that's the next big thing. So I'm really excited about that. That was, uh, it was, we shot obviously during pandemic times. So it was challenging because we couldn't do all the fun things that you love to do when you're in a random city like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and, sure. and, uh, and on set. But aside from that, it was, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience. And I'm really excited for everyone to see that show. Before I ask my last two questions, which are going to be really quick ones, I'm curious about that. Are you finding, film, having filmed in Pittsburgh, are you finding that most of the things that you're working on these days are not filmed in New York and Los Angeles? Because most of the interviews I'm doing lately, that's been the case where some people are even saying, I've never made a movie in LA. Wow. Yeah, I've never worked in LA. I've gone there for meetings and I've gone there for you know, pilot season, God help me, but I've <laughs> never, but I've never actually uh, shot anything in LA. Um, yeah, I think that's right. I think there's a little bit of a, a branching out of us realizing that you can accomplish a lot, you know, on a soundstage and, um, and that there are really talented technicians in Atlanta and Pittsburgh and, you know, places that you, you don't have to set it in New York or LA to get that talent, behind, you know, below the line. Cool. First of the two quick questions. Favorite musical artist of all time? Do you have one? Prince, who just had a birthday yesterday. Yes, he did. A lot of geniuses were born yesterday outside of music as well. Last question for you. Besides the chair, besides your new movie, what's a TV show or a thing that we should be streaming if we need a new thing to start binging and getting into? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm annoyed at how mainstream this is going to be. But I loved Mayor of Easttown on HBO. I loved it. Uh, in, in the UK, it's, a, it's, in, it's playing on Sky, Sky Atlantic. But I loved that show. I thought it was so tight. I thought Caitlin Winslet was amazing. Um, so that's something that like people can watch now if they haven't already. Um, my second one is, I am also biased because we are working together, but um, Janixa Bravo, Bravo's movie, uh, Zola, is coming out. It's an A24 film that's coming out on June 30th. And I loved, I, I had the privilege of seeing it at Sundance. And um, Sundance 2020. And it was, I've never laughed so hard in the theater. It was so funny. And so those are my two recommendations. Thanks for the picks. Thanks for the time. <laughs> Looking forward to all the award nominations on this one. Not that I jinxed it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to you and team, okay?
Thank you, Darren. Outrocast. <laughs>